From KPRC, this is Channel 2 News at 6. Underwater and overwhelmed. People are coming out, even with dogs. Some have life jackets on, uh, whatever they can. Uh, children. That was Houston one year ago today. I think there's a small child on top of that one gentleman there. Um, the water is waist high at this point. A natural disaster. Just take a look at that and let that sink in. Spawning unnatural conditions. We're getting reports that folks are uh, calling flood control, crawling into their attics to get away from the rising flood water wow. at this point. Harvey creating a hell on earth. Families are coming out of their neighborhood on rafts. The water went away, but the heartache did not. When I come back, you know, everything was wet. The water up to above the windowsills. The water got up, up to at least here. Entire lives lined the streets. It just shows how much everybody lost. Some had nowhere to live, nowhere to rest their heads. I'll be sleeping in my car tonight, tomorrow, and the next day. Families felt helpless. The kids, they depend on us. And we don't know what to tell them. But that is when the rest of the world learned you should never count a Houstonian out. Mr. Estrada? Yes? I have some blankets for you. More. We saw hope. There's more love than there is water out here, you know, and it's true. We saw resiliency. The shining light through all of this has been the people. We saw a city united. The Houston Astros are world champions! A broken community healed by each other after a year that only made us Houston stronger. Houston, we are stronger. It has been a trying year to say the least, but just look how far we've come. Now there is more work to be done. Homes to rebuild, flood prevention ideas to engineer, plans to put into action, but we are pushing forward together. Now during Harvey, we had our reporters all over South Texas. They were with many of you in those floodwaters. They told your stories even as they too were being battered by the elements. Tonight, those same reporters are bringing you stories of courage, inspiration, and hope. We begin with our Joel Eisenbaum. He showed us Ponderosa Forest, a subdivision near Cypress that became Cypress Creek. Tonight, he's back in that very same neighborhood. And Joel, a much different story one year later. I'd say so, Dominique. There's no longer five feet of water in this neighborhood. I mean, do you remember Ponderosa Forest during Harvey? Cypress Creek was seemingly everywhere. But there emerged some heroes during those four days, hundreds of rescues by the Ponderosa Fire Department. That house is uh, still smoldering. Harvey hammered this place. The family who lived here got out alive. But in Northwest Harris County, a year ago, Ponderosa Forest was in big trouble. Bottom floors of homes vanished into bloated Cypress Creek, and still some homeowners wouldn't leave. Trying to get people to come out was hard. How many times you flooded? At least three. Sam Clifton snapped some ominous photos from his second floor during Harvey. He holed up there until he came to a startling realization. This is not like before. We're not prepared for this. Clifton just finished putting his house back together, but he's had enough and wants to move. He's hoping for a government buyout. It is an incredible scene out here. I've never seen this much water up on houses. Dozens of Ponderosa Forest houses remain vacant a year later. In this neighborhood, piles of debris aren't yet a distant memory. But make no mistake, Ponderosa Forest is coming back. And Michael Jenkins is proof of that. Right here. He's days away from returning to the home and neighborhood he loves. So what's your mind frame right now? I mean, you feeling real positive? You feeling... Absolutely. I want back in here terribly bad. Yeah. Michael Jenkins, among hundreds here in the Ponderosa Forest subdivision who have had a very tough year, but still wearing a smile. We're live in North Harris County tonight. I'm Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Joel. And our next story is from our Jacob Rascone. When Harvey hit, Jacob was working for NBC News. The network sent him here to cover the storm that had devastated his hometown. One of the areas Jacob covered was Friendswood. And he's back there tonight working for us now to show us how that community is doing one year later. Jacob? 
One year ago, I remember right here at this street, I was in a boat and we were going house to house doing rescues with the police department and with citizens. It was incredible to see. And while everybody we've talked to in Friendswood is so thrilled to be back, the reality is that many are not. This is one of the homes that is being raised, but many homes are also vacant for sale and the recovery is far from over. They had no time to pack or even say goodbye. Bad. This is awful. Water nearly to the roof in some areas, nonstop rescues for days. Nearby Wedgwood Elementary became an impromptu shelter. Donations filled the hallways and even the front office. More than 800 evacuees slept here, the principal says, some of them for weeks. Madeline Berry. One year later, school is back in session, but the recovery is far from over. But I remember a ghost town around here when I was over here starting. It took decades for Kenneth Bowman and Sandy Garcia to build their lives here, and minutes for most of it to disappear. I mean, I lost a lot. My son's school stuff, um, you know, 42 years. Boom, gone. They just finished staining new cabinets. It's yeah, taken no nearly color. a year to rebuild their home by themselves. But as much as they lost, they say, even more was gained. And, and closeness. Oh my gosh, we're all so close in the neighborhood. I mean, everybody helped each other. The reality is that it's taken so long for so many of these people, for many reasons, to get back into their homes. Many of the neighbors, we're told, have just started moving back in in the last couple of months. And a note on that closeness, that family we talked to that lived here for more than 40 years, they said during Harvey they met their neighbors who they hadn't known in all that time. They're embarrassed to say that, but they're so happy to know them, and the closeness is as if they've known them their entire lives. Reporting live in Friendswood, Jacob Rascone, KPRC, Channel 2 News. It's good to see them finally getting back on their feet. Jacob. Yes, new relationships, and as we can see, new home heights. Jacob, thank you. Harris County voters took a big step in moving forward over the weekend, approving a flood bond to protect the area from future storms. More than 200 flood mitigation projects are going to be funded by this $2.5 billion relief bond. Our question tonight, which projects will county leaders tackle first? Channel 2's Lee Ferlisi joining us live tonight with what comes next for the money raised in this flood bond. Lee? Bill and Dominique, they are choosing the projects that they could get done the fastest for their first round. One example right behind me, the channels that will lead into the Attics and Barker Reservoirs will be improved. But first, they needed approval for the funding. While turnout was low, just 6.6 percent of registered voters came out to vote on the flood bond. It was a low turnout, but it was about the same turnout as last year's November 2017 statewide election in Harris County for constitutional amendments. Yet approval was high for this $2.5 billion bond. 85 percent approvals. Right. Uh, pretty good result. Yeah. Now we're getting a look at the projects the Flood Control District would like to tackle first. These 14 projects will go before Commissioner's Court tomorrow for approval. Right by Ellington Field, we're going to look at the drainage areas in the neighborhoods. The first round of projects picked already had studies done or land bought, so those projects could move forward quickly. Take Greens Bayou and Cutton Road. There is a uh, uh, an existing basin that we've been working on for years. We've never had enough money to be able to fully excavate that detention basin. And then there's a project that will affect a lot of people on the west side. People will see a big difference when those projects get underway. With all the flooding the west side experienced after the controlled releases of attics and Barker reservoirs, a major cleanup of the channels is on the list. There's 30 different channels that drain to attics and Barker reservoir on the west side that filled up with silt and sediment after the tax day flood in 2016 and, and even more after Harvey. The commissioner's court will be asked to give their stamp of approval tomorrow. There won't even be any discussion. I mean, it'll just go through. So over the next couple of weeks, we should have a timeline on all of the projects and we will bring that to you 
when we get it. Also, to see a list of these first 14 projects, go to click2houston.com. We'll have all the information right there. We're live in Southwest Harris County. Lee for Lisi, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you so much, Lee. We are seeing more signs of recovering and rebounding every day, not just families, but also important parts of our community. Many churches and synagogues have spent this past year rebuilding. Just this past week, Beth Yashurin, the largest conservative congregation of Judaism in the country, finished installing new seats in its main sanctuary. During Harvey, water was as high as four feet inside that building. And another sign of progress, Houston's theater district. Alley Theater and the Wortham took on a lot of water during the storm. Both suffered millions of dollars worth of damage. After extensive renovations, the alley is now back open and the Wortham will reopen in September. On this one-year mark, a milestone for several schools that suffered damage during Harvey. And there were many of them. Many campuses reopened today after a year of extensive repairs. One was HISD's Hilliard Elementary. During Harvey, Hall's Bayou swelled and pushed four feet of water into that school. Now, when students and teachers arrived for class today, they saw shiny new floors, fresh paint, and new furniture. I loved it. I didn't get a chance to really enjoy the building last year because Harvey hit right before school started. So this is actually my first year in the building. It's like job well done. We made it. We overcame. <laughs> Hilliard Elementary is one of a dozen new or newly renovated campuses that open today. Still ahead on this special expanded one-hour edition of Channel 2 News at 6, an incredible story of Harvey heroes. How a terrible family tragedy on Clear Creek just one year before Harvey inspired a mother and her young son to take action that possibly saved lives during the storm. But first, a Houston Stronger look back at what we saw then and what we see now. A year ago tonight, so much was underwater, including our busiest roadways. This was West Beltway 8 near Memorial Drive. And here's how it looks now. Harvey's floodwaters replaced by Houston traffic. Harvey Heroes on KPRC is brought to you by Ashley Home Store, Generator Industries, and HCA Houston Healthcare. One year after Harvey, we are checking back in with some of the Houstonians who captured our hearts. Betsa Bay Gomez wrote a letter to Santa, not asking for Christmas presents, but for help for her family. My wish was is that my dad to get better because um, during the hurricane, it was started raining so hard. And that's when the rooftop fell. Days later, on her birthday, she saw the kindness of strangers in full force. <laughs> The Gomez's have continued to struggle through, still living in their damaged home. State Representative Armando Wally, who's been in their corner from the beginning, is on a mission to get Betsa Bay and her family a new home. And we promise to keep you posted on Betsa Bay and her family, that's for sure. And now we move on to a remarkable story of heroism after heartache. Yes, a mother wrote to us saying, quote, I really feel it was my husband in heaven who put it on my heart that we needed to get a boat ready and we needed to be prepared, end quote. She says they had no idea at that point what Harvey was about to do, but she, her young son, and their friends and family wanted to be ready to help. And as Brandon Walker shows us tonight, their family tragedy one year before the storm may have saved many lives during the storm itself. This is not an inlet. This is a street in Friendswood. From his cell phone, Abe Miner told a story of Harvey in Friendswood. Hey, what's up, guys? This is my crew right here. The World Watch 2, as Miner and his crew, as he called them, About five families today. helped to save lives. No one knew how bad this was going to be, especially where we live. Come on, guys. Where they live, Friendswood's Forest Bend subdivision submerged. Clear Creek snakes through the area, so when Harvey hit, the creek swelled. Go check on Grandma. Can Grandma make it through the water? The crew kept going, door side service getting neighbors out. Abe, Dominic, Sean, Riley, too. That's him in the boat. He's 12. Didn't think twice about lending a hand. So I said, let's, let, I'm going to go too. I'm going to go help. No doubts, no hesitations? No. Why? Because I grew up on the water. I grew up with my dad on the, on the creek, up and down, up and down, driving boats. The creek for Riley marks home. That familiarity, though, hurt just as much as it helped. You see, on Clear Creek, May 2016, Riley's dad, Patrick, drowned. He went in without a life vest, didn't come up. 
He was just going for a swim. I was driving. So I have a lot of experiences on the water. <laughs> I wish somebody was there. <clears throat> Say you're okay, man. Patrick and Abe were close. Abe says his friend would have been there with him during Harvey, and in a way, he feels he was. The boat they used for rescues has Patrick's touch. Neighbor Julia gave it to Riley and his mom, Deanna, days before the storm. Deanna asked for it after something told her she'd need it. I do think it was my husband. Yeah. Because he drowned in that creek. And he didn't want anybody else to, to have to suffer. We're all here. This is your neighborhood SEAL Team 6 right here. Much has been said about what happens as we what, grieve, what, what inspires us to heal. Well, during Harvey, one family's inspiration to help rescue others came after something so unspeakably painful. It's what Patrick would have wanted. Riley says so. He'd probably be happy that I was helping people. Wow. He'd probably be with me. The last question I asked everyone was, what's the takeaway here? What did they want you at home to learn? And they say that the answer there is simple. Be kind to others because it goes a very long way. And Friendswood, I'm Brandon Walker, KPRC Channel 2 News. That's a great story, Brandon. Mm. And it amplifies a bigger story that thousands of people took their boats, staged them at malls, and then started going into neighborhoods unasked, rescuing people. Our citizens were the first line of defense yeah. during this storm, Absolutely. and the citizen rescues were innumerable. And it had to be that way. Mm -hmm. You can see more stories profiling Harvey heroes on our website. We have an entire section dedicated to Houston's recovery after the storm. Just go to clicktohouston.com slash Harvey. Justin joins us now. Boy, it's, you know, incredible to see what we were experiencing one year ago. And yep. today, we're hoping for a shower here yeah. and there. Mm -hmm. it, it really is, isn't it? And I say that was my first hurricane. I'm just so very proud of the work we did here, what the community did as well. I want to thank everybody. You and Frank did a great so. job. In fact, yes. we'll be talking thank about that a little much. bit later in the hour. I really yeah. appreciate that, Bill. But yes, we were thankful to get some rain today in mm -hmm. some spots. Other folks, not so much. I know. It was just hot out there. Check out the uh, live look from uh, right here at Channel 2. Uh, clouds starting to break up just a bit. There's been a few additional showers, one in downtown right now, but that's about it for the most part. The heat's starting to throw, try to move back in some spots. 90 degrees right now. We've got feels like temperatures close to 100. Southeast winds, yeah, it's going to pump the moisture in over the next couple of days. We're going to be in this rinse and repeat pattern, so be ready for that. Notice we've got one lone shower here up just north of Waller, and then, of course, this little guy right in the center, bullseye right into downtown between the uh, 59 and uh, 45 interchange there, so working through Midtown. Watch out for that. That's about it, though. Other than that, we're pretty much done for the rest of the night. Now, notice as you go a little further west, that's no way to not see any rain today. Temperatures there still in the low 90s to about mid-90s as you get out towards LaGrange. It was 97, 98 degrees up towards Bryan College Station. Elsewhere, though, where they've gotten some of the rain worked over, things right now in the mid to upper 80s. So the southeast winds will continue to keep things fairly mild and muggy for much of the night tonight. Those feels like temperatures, yeah, if you don't get any rain, they're likely going to sit in the triple digits again tomorrow and the next couple of days after that. So your power planner for the rest of this evening will shut the rain down and then we'll eventually see things dip down into the mid to upper 70s as we get going towards your Tuesday forecast. Now, the Gulf moisture is going to bring more shower chances in as we head into Tuesday afternoon. Notice fairly light in the morning, but as we get into the afternoon, they'll become a little more spotty and a little more widespread, hopefully, as we get in towards the middle of the week. Wednesday and Thursday, notice that the coverage gets a little brighter with some of these pockets, and that's where we could see some stronger downpours, and that's because we've got a little more atmospheric moisture mixing in. If you're watching last night at 10 o'clock, we had this big bagel of just dry air stuck on top of us with that area of high pressure. That's broken down a bit. And we've got little disturbances rolling through, and as these move through, they'll bring us a chance to crank up some of the atmospheric moisture. And you say, well, why is that important? Because the deeper we can get this, or the more we can get that through the atmosphere, the better chances we can get a little more widespread coverage and hopefully give folks a chance to get at least some rain that has not seen it. Best chances for that, though, still look, look like they may be east of most of the metro area, but we'll keep our fingers crossed nonetheless. 94 tomorrow, then the rain chances go up to about 40-50% Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They'll stay that way through much of the holiday weekend forecast, and then we'll dry it out just a bit as we go in towards early next week's forecast. So no major <laughs> washout expected for the holiday, but you certainly you hear a quick rumble of thunder. You best get inside or that barbecue is getting soaked. Good advice. Good point. Thank you, Justin. Good we'll take a look at today's news headlines coming up, including a bizarre case of home alone. A local couple faces charges after allegedly leaving their 11-year-old at home while they attended a concert in Detroit, Michigan. That story's next. 
But first, another look at Houston during Harvey and now. This portion of I-10 was basically a river during the storm. Water almost as high as the signs overhead. We went back to that same spot. Several feet of water replaced by several miles of cars. You saw this unfold right here on Channel 2. A woman worried about her missing brother spots him during our live coverage from GRB Shelter. Our Haley Hernandez found Greg among the thousands of evacuees. It was an emotional moment for everyone when she delivered the happy news. We found him. <laughs> I've been looking for him all night. One year later, we checked with Kara Flores and her brother Greg. Kara says it's been a trying year, but she remains thankful that Greg was found safe that day and is now back with their family. It was a moving moment for that family, for us, and for all our viewers as well. Truly, really, and we have more Harvey updates for you and stories of inspiration straight ahead on this expanded one-hour edition of Channel 2 News at 6 o'clock. But right now, we do want to get you caught up with today's news headlines. Local parents are facing legal trouble after allegedly leaving an 11-year-old girl home alone for nearly a day and a half. Well, they traveled more than a thousand miles away to attend a rock concert. John Guerrero Jr. and Virginia Yearned are both facing child endangerment charges while they attended a concert for British heavy metal band Godflesh at a club in Detroit. Investigators say the child's aunt called the family home and when the girl answered, she told her aunt about her parents' absence. A neighbor told us that the father might have been in Detroit for work. I don't think what they were doing was putting their daughter in danger at all. Because they're good parents and she's a smart girl, and he does set up um, concert equipment. That's his job. He has a truck that's full of equipment parked out here every day. His, that's how he makes a living. We just checked and Virginia Yearn has posted bond, but John Guerrero Jr. is still being held without bond. We are following a very sad breaking news alert in Rosenberg where deputies are investigating the drowning of a two-year-old boy. Our map locates this in the 6100 block of Eagle Drive. We're told the child wandered off to a small pond on the property, got into the water, and drowned. His identity has not yet been released. We do have a health alert to tell you about tonight. Texas Children's Hospital West Campus has confirmed that a patient has tested positive for measles. According to the Houston Health Department, the patient is a boy between the ages of one and three. We're also told that the child had traveled out of the country recently. We are working to get more information for you, so look for updates both on air and online at clicktohouston.com. Flags at the White House are back at half staff tonight, remembering U.S. Senator and war hero John McCain. Today, President Trump released a statement saying he respected the late senator's service to our country. McCain will lie in state in the Arizona Capitol on Wednesday, followed by the U.S. Capitol Rotunda on Friday. A national memorial service will take place on Saturday in Washington, followed by a private burial at the Naval Academy in Maryland on Sunday. I will be in Washington later this week to cover the events for you, remembering Senator McCain. We will have those live reports on air and online at click2houston.com. And back to Harvey now, one year after the storm. Our next point of focus, the reservoirs. We're looking at life after the storm for neighborhoods along those dams. That's straight ahead on this expanded one-hour edition of Channel 2 News at 6. But first, another sign of how we became Houston Stronger. We saw neighborhoods submerged in Harvey's floodwaters. People wading in waist-deep water or higher. This was Valley Rock Drive in East Houston then, and this is the view from that same spot now, that neighborhood one year later. It was the haunting viral video that touched so many, a Friendswood man playing his piano with Harvey's floodwaters at his feet. Recording artist Vanessa Carlton saw Eric Harding's video and sent him a brand new piano, a bright spot in a difficult time for that family. In the months that followed, Eric, his wife, and their seven children all lived on the second floor of their home. But tonight, a happy update. The Hardings now have their entire house back. And that is indeed good news for the Harding family as we continue this special expanded edition of Channel 2 News at 6 o'clock. You saw it in their home, the water. It was the major factor during this lingering storm, of course. Hard to wrap one's mind around it, but let's try. A total of one trillion gallons of water fell across Harris County over that four-day period. According to Harris County's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, that is enough water to fill the Astrodome 
3,200 times, and it could cover Harris County's 1,777 square miles with an average of 33.7 inches of water. Water, of course, the main worry for folks living along the Attics and Barker Reservoirs. Tonight, our Robert Arnold is live in the Heathwood subdivision, a neighborhood that flooded after the release of those dams. Robert, one year later, families still watching those reservoirs closely. They are because for those living near Barker and Attics, they flooded either from water pushing into their neighborhoods or from water being released from the reservoirs into Buffalo Bayou. And for the people in these neighborhoods, their recovery is far from complete. It's a long process. We're kind of tired of doing it all the time. Melissa and David Klutzbuescher's road to home has been long. I cried every day I came into the neighborhood after work to, to come and work on my house for a couple of hours and go out to Katy where we were staying. We we're a family five split into three different homes. Flood repairs on the inside of their home are 80% complete. Their Bear Creek Village house is a stone's throw from the Attic's Reservoir. This neighborhood was largely underwater from Harvey's staggering amounts of rain inundating reservoirs and eventually pushing into neighborhoods. When you drive through the back part of the neighborhood, it's very depressing. Many of the homes closer to attics are not nearly complete. Some businesses along Clay Road remain closed but vow to return. I just wish there was more people that used to live here coming back. And there's a lot of people that decided they're done. Then we evacuated to the hotel. Catherine Clark estimates. Then we went to an apartment. Her family and belongings moved seven times over the past year. I actually went to the doctor and got anti-anxiety medication early on, <laughs> which is kind of cheating, probably. The family only recently moved back into the first floor of their house, but has no furniture yet. It feels really good to be back home, and it's also exhausting. Their home is in the Heathwood subdivision near Briar Forest. That's along Buffalo Bayou and downstream from the reservoirs. They escaped flooding during Harvey's rains, but flooded after water was released from the reservoirs into the bayou. This house was built in 79, and that neighbor has been in this neighborhood since 1980, and she said there has never been a house in here that's flooded. Homes in this neighborhood are like many throughout the Houston area in various stages of repair. Almost everyone we spoke to was happy to see the passage of the recent flood bond and are hopeful it signals a new age of flood control. But if it happens again, I'm gone. Several people are suing the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which operates and maintains those dams. Now, since Harvey, the Corps has been working to repair and upgrade several features in Attics and Barker to alleviate future flooding concerns. Reporting live from West Houston, Robert Arnold, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Robert. What we found out from Harvey is that everywhere is a flood zone, technically. Absolutely. Any place in Houston can mm -hmm. flood. That's right. You know, we had members of our news team spread out all over the Houston area covering Harvey for you. They brought you vital information, even as some of their homes were in jeopardy from the storm as well. Several of our reporters, many of our teammates, did suffer major damage personally. Our Sophia Beausoleil was one of them. Her parents' home, the one she grew up in, was inundated by flood water. She's joining us live from Cinco Ranch, her community, which saw an awful lot of damage. Sophia? Bill, I am very proud of this community, and this is a resilient community, and you can see behind me that the water is gone and the repairs are still underway for many, but for some, they are back home, and I caught up with two women who I've known since I was a kid, and they told me their stories. It's difficult to look at. Valerie Madursky and her family watched as storm water started to take over their South Park neighborhood in Cinco Ranch. There's a stop sign at the end of the street, and all day the water just kept rising and when it almost reached the top we were like we need we need to go valerie's husband stayed behind with the dog but she and her kids were rescued by the cajun navy we just stood there with our our garbage bag and um and we waited for rescue it's hard it uh, definitely well, one of the lowest moments of our life. She would later learn they got more than two feet of water in their home. And across the street in a different community, homeowners were facing the same story. This is actually Mason Road going towards, uh, coming towards Canyon Gate. Homes in Canyon Gate, parts of Cinco Ranch, and other communities surrounding George Bush Park flooded after the release of the Barker Reservoir, a first for this entire community and for Penny Long and her husband. I was watching the front and my husband was watching the back and it actually came in from 
front and back at the same time and then it started coming in through the walls. We've lived here for 23 years. We built the house when we were engaged and the water has never ever even risen above the curb. The only way out was by boat and the water didn't go down for days. But a year later and there's been a lot of progress. It doesn't feel like it's been a year. It's still very close. I have moments where I'm sad and I can feel the tears you know, building up and moments where I'm just so thankful, blessed. We've come a long way in a year. You see, the floodwaters didn't wash away this community's spirit. Instead, gave us all a new perspective of life. I appreciate everything you have. Don't take anything for granted. You just never know. And I know we all appreciate everybody who helped. I know Valerie and Penny told me they appreciate their friends, their families, and the strangers who helped them. Same thing for my family to the booth, the Maroons, my in-laws, everybody. This is the progress of my mom's house. We still have a long way to go, but we will get there just like the rest of you across Houston. Reporting live from Katie, Sophia Bosley, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you for sharing, Sophia. Mm -hmm. Now to a site that many homeowners have wanted for their homes over the past year, houses being lifted to protect them from future flooding. We've seen an awful lot of this in the Meyerland and Bel Air areas. Our Ryan Korsgaard live tonight, and Ryan, this is really giving neighborhoods a new look. Uh, it truly is. Now, you have to keep in mind that this day started with this house all the way down here on the ground. Now it's about five feet up. Now the big hope for homeowners here, they hope it's above any future flood. Parts of Bel Air and Meyerland look like beachfront property with homes now high off of the ground. One year ago, Mark Lavage's stepson rode a canoe to rescue Mark and his wife from their home. Now Mark rescues his home. So you can see right here where how high it got. After two floods in the five years he's lived here, he lifts his home up five feet, eight inches at a time. And it means the world to, to me and my wife. We, we just we want a place where we don't have to worry about whether it's raining or not. We want to come home to our house and just not, uh, not think about a, a disaster like a flood. The dirt work for the lift had already started for Frank Inselbuck and his family when Harvey brought 53 inches of water into his home. About two weeks later, workers lifted his 4,200 square foot home about six feet off of the ground in Meyerland. We finally feel like our lives can start heading in the right direction. In the last year, other homes have moved together like these two next door neighbors in Bel Air. Harvey brought the water level to 34 inches. This lift went up five feet. It would have been easier to move, but I love my neighborhood. Planet 3 elevation workers use hydraulic jacks under the concrete foundation to lift the homes. The cost between $100,000 and $300,000. I would guess there's been about 200. Uh, we've done 60 of those since, uh, actually since the first of the year. Wayne Fairley is the CEO of Planet 3. He says all but about 20 of those 200 homes lifted are in Meyerland and Bel Air. We see it accelerating still. We see an inventory of thousands of homes still to be elevated over the next uh, two, five, and then beyond. He says more to come. Take a look. That is the front door. Right up there, you can see the light is still on. Well, this would be the front porch, and this is the railing. It now comes, it's about four feet off of the ground at this point. Keep in mind, they still have the flag up there. There is still hope. In fact, talking to the owner of the company that lifted this, he said on this day is when you see the life start to come back into the owners because they once again have hope. We're live in Meyerland. Ryan Korsgaard, KPRC, Channel 2 News. It's remarkable imagery, Ryan. As you know, Harvey was a deadly storm. Tonight, on this one-year mark, we do want to remember the dozens of lives that were lost. We lost so many beautiful members of our community. Among those killed, a veteran Houston police officer, Sergeant Steve Bettis, died after he inadvertently drove into floodwaters on his way to work to help people. Bettis, a husband and father of two, was a 34-year veteran of the Houston Police Department. Another death during Harvey was Jill Rennick. She was the one who worked at the Omni Hotel. Rennick drowned in the basement when water from Buffalo Bayou flooded that building. And during Harvey, six members of the Saldivar family died when their van was swept off the road and into Green's Bayou. Four children and their two great-grandparents all drowned. 
Now, whether you suffered a loss during the storm, had water in your home, or felt the fear that so many felt during and after the storm, there is still help out there. It's called Innovative Alternatives. It's a local nonprofit aimed at helping people cope with post-Harvey stress and anxiety. They say support helps, and that's why they are still offering counseling to those who need it. The organization is offering free individual sessions and unlimited group sessions. If you or someone you know would like more information, we have posted a link to an interview that the organization did on our weekend news on the video page of click2houston.com.